In this video, I'm going to show you the setup and use of some Aquara Zigbee devices. Make sure you stick around, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below to keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Storage Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at these. This is a range of Zigbee devices from Aquara. Aquara? Aquara. You may have seen me discover these in a package uh, in a previous video, um, and I said I would do a full setup and review of them because they look quite cool. So, this is that. Let's unbox them, see what we've got, set them up, and I'll let you know what I think. So, We've got two motion sensors, we've got a vibration sensor, a leak sensor, a door sensor, a Q, and a switch module. So let's start off with the more boring ones. I wish they didn't have to have so much packaging though. It's a bit unnecessary all this plastic, isn't it? So, in the motion sensor box, we've got a little note, a chunky manual, the motion sensor unit, motion sensor base, and a little sticker to go to stick them together. That's cute, that's small. That is actually very similar in form factor to a generic Zigbee one that I tried out a few weeks ago for my motion sensing light video. Um, but I quite like it. I like the form factor. Easy, simple, small, effective. So, the door sensor. Again, plastic. I imagine what we're going to have in here is a door sensor. Oh, he's cute, isn't he? I've said it's a very big box with quite such a small sensor. But very nice. Leak sensor. Another manual. Again, a big box for a very small little sensor. Cute little thing. The vibration sensor. Now, I haven't had a vibration sensor before, so I'm curious to see how big this is. Oh, very cute. If anyone has any cool ideas as to what to use this for, let me know. I'm thinking maybe on the door, so I know someone's knocked on the door. Um, I'm thinking maybe on the washing machine, so I know that when the washing's done. Let me know if you have any better ideas. The cube. Now, and this is cool. This I'm really looking forward to actually using because this provides a very simple control for your smart home. It is, of course, a cube. Quite a weighty cube. But that's very cool because you've got six different things you can do with it. You can either push it, shake it, flip it, flip it further, rotate it, or tap it. I don't know how that's going to appear in Home Assistant, but I'm very curious to try it out and see what automations we can create with it. And last of all, we have 
arguably the most exciting thing is a single gang switch module. Ooh. And this switch module will sit behind your light switch in the wall and it basically turns a dumb light switch smart. Well, there we go, that is them all unboxed. We'll get the standard sensors hooked up so I can just start using them in my Zigbee life. I'll save this. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. We can put the vibration sensor somewhere exciting. And I will install the Q and the switch module and let you know what I think. And of course it goes without saying, don't do electrics if you don't know what you're doing. You will get electrocuted and you may die. Um, installing it is reasonably simple. You just replace the switch with the module and then attach the switch to the module. I did need an extender to expand my back box so the module fit behind the switch. Right, so these, the motion sensor and the dual sensor are basic sensors. The Acquire Motion sensor looks quite similar to an unbranded one that I've got recently from Amazon. Uh, the door sensor is nice and small, but nothing special about them. Vibration sensor, however, is quite cool because there are loads of different uses for it. And I'm going to let you decide or come up with some cool ideas. So if you have any cool ideas for uses for a vibration sensor, let me know in the comments below. Um, the cube. The cube is very cool because you can do six different things with it. It's like a little remote control and it will do different responses based on that. So we're going to get these connected into Home Assistant and see what we can do. Configure devices, add device, remove the tabs, and press the button, remove the tab, Remove the tab. So our car cube, this thing here, is in Home Assistant. Um, but what we need to do is actually listen for the event. So it is a ZHA event, obviously, because it's Zuby Home Assistant. And if we listen to it, we can do things like rotate the cube and we can see information about it. We can see that it's flipped 90 degrees. We can see that it's now on activated phase six, whereas before it was on number five. And actually, if we have activated phase one, we can see that it's rotated. We can see that it's slid with the Akara logo on top because it is activated phase one. Um, so loads of cool things we can see with it. The problem is, obviously, these are all very complicated and interpreting these is difficult. And that is where a blueprint comes in. Now, this is exciting. This is my first actual blueprint. And we can use the import blueprint function. Fingers crossed. And we can import our blueprint. We can see all the content for it and we import it. And what this does is this will then allow us to create an automation. So in this blueprint, we can see oh, there are a lot of things we can do. We can have actions for flipping our cube, uh, rotating our cube, changing the side on any cube, uh, knocking on any side of the cube, and then going from a specific side to another specific side. Now that gets a lot complicated because there are a lot of sides to go to and a lot of other sides. Then we've got knocking on each side, sliding on each side. And we've got shaking the cube, dropping the cube, rotating the cube. So plenty we could do. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, and we're going to set this up for my sitting room. So if we turn this on, then we can change an action for when we rotate or flip the cube 90 degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to call a service, uh, input boolean turn on 
the retire scene. Very simple. When we flip it all the way, what we want to happen is we want to turn on the TV scene. And we also, of course, want to turn on the TV. When we slide it, when we knock it, when we knock it, let's do a knock. And the knock is going to be a cool service, media player pause to the Sky Q box. So we can knock it, and we might as well also turn on the lights in the kitchen. So that way, oh, correct, a lot of things there. So that way, that when we knock it, it'll pause the TV and turn on the lights in the kitchen so we can go and grab a snack or whatever. And to be honest, that's probably enough for now. So I've had the T1 switch module installed for a few days now, and it is going strong, very strong, in fact. Um, and I quite like it because I can control my lights directly from inside Home Assistant. And there is a little delay, um, maybe two seconds delay if you're doing it from Home Assistant, which is a shame, but I suppose it's the price you're going to have to pay. Um, and just having them smart so I know that, you know, I can turn them off when I get into bed or whatever if I've left them on, or have them part of a routine as a part of a scene um, is great. And having a solution that doesn't require a neutral, that's what's really great, because none of these old houses have neutrals. Now, of course it goes without saying, but your continued support with this channel means so much to me. Uh, it started off as a bit of a lockdown project, had nothing else to do with sitting at home all day. Um, so I thought I'd share my knowledge of Home Assistant and the smart home world. Uh, with you, but actually it's become a lot more than that. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this um, and we've released over 65 videos now, which isn't bad in just over a year. And I've only got you to thank for that. Um, so thank you for coming along on this journey with me. I definitely wasn't expecting it to last a year, um, but here we are and I've enjoyed every second of it. As always, if you like this video and like the channel then subscribe and give it a thumbs up and all that shenanigans um, as always if you want to reach out feel free either in the comments below or via social media or via my email if you really need me email is the best bet um, and if you have any ideas for any videos you'd like me to see any stuff you'd like me to do more of anything you'd like me to do less of then please let me know and I'll see what I can do so there we have it the Akara sensors integrated into Home Assistant and slightly automated. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.